Hi, everybody. It is May 17, 2019. I want to pass along some more information on the Oroville Dam, but uh, we'll start here. Where are the storms? Where's the rain? What's happening here in California? Doesn't look like any storms. Our weather reporting from mainstream media is just incredible, unconscionable. Uh, I look. My head every single day now, 24-7, it's just filled with this, uh, I don't know, bubble of incomprehensibility, incredulity of what is taking place in our country. Uh, are you getting a lot of storms in Nebraska and South Dakota? Um, did you get a lot of storms in other areas, uh, like in Kansas today? Because um, earlier I saw... A, awful lot of what appeared to be severe weather severe weather and look at what has happened to my college of DuPage yes the page isn't working great okay um, so it doesn't appear as if you got any rain today because I've been checking it um, and I haven't seen any I don't see any storms coming in you know, so we, you were supposed to be getting tremendous amounts of rainfall. Uh, did it snow in the Sahara? I, I don't know. All right. Well, very. It's very bizarre what we are living. So, where the Lake Oroville? Where is that level at? Eight hundred ninety point eight seven. It will soon go to eight ninety one. All right. Well, some of the information that I have to share with you relates to this very high level. Now, I just want to say uh, thank you for posting this video, Red Red, um, because I may not have come across unless a subscriber and that was, it could very well be the case that a subscriber would inform me of what was just posted in the LA Times today. Engineers up failure risk for dam protecting Disneyland, dozens of Orange County cities. It's the Prado Dam or Prado Dam. Okay, well, we'll get into that, but where did I learn about this? Right here. Red Rad, posting a video. Very important to circulate information. But I do want to play for you uh, the first few seconds of this video because it's very important. Using an EMF 390 electromagnetic field analyzer, uh, the image on the left, you will see we did a reading. This is our bedroom wall, folks. Extremely high reading of 812.6 volts per meter. After some mitigation, we got it down to normal levels of 0.3. But the fact of the matter is, folks, if I wouldn't have had the EMF 390 and did some analyzing around our apartment, I would have never known this instrument potentially saved our lives. If you would like an EMF 390, folks, I suggest that everybody has their home tested for dangerous levels of electromagnetic radiation. I will leave the link in the description to the EMF 390. God bless. Take care and we'll talk to you soon. Folks, okay. Then he goes on to speak about Lake Oroville and well now another dam actually um, several dams which we will get into in one second but the links to that uh, meter are below Ridrad's video. So, here we go. Unbelievable. Yeah, our infrastructure has literally been eroding purposefully, purposefully, deliberately, intentionally. You pay the high taxes and they don't do a friggin' thing. I'm going to show you uh, some assessments of the Oroville Dam, which, well, uh, 
somehow someone has to be able to get information from the Department of Water Resources to really find out what the hell is going on with the Oroville Dam. But here, federal engineers are raising alarms that a significant flood event could compromise the spillway of Southern California's aging Prada Dam. Prado. Prada. <laughs> no, Prado. And potentially inundate dozens of Orange County communities from Disneyland to Newport Beach after conducting an assessment of the 78-year-old structure. Earlier this month, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers announced that it was raising the dam's risk category from moderate to high urgency. Wow. Our concern right now is about the concrete slab of the spillway and how well it will perform if water were to spill over the top of the dam. All right. Um, February 2017, a concrete spillway at the Oroville Dam disintegrated during heavy rains and triggered the evacuation of more than, well, close to 200,000. Uh, the head of the California Water Resources Department, which operates the dam, was removed after an independent probe found the failure was the result of a lax safety culture. Well, it seems that that culture, I don't think it's changed. Uh, the Corps of Engineers discovered that the 60-year-old Whittier Narrows Dam, about 40 miles to the west of the Prado Dam, was structurally unsafe and posed a potentially catastrophic risk to more than one million people in working-class communities along the San Gabriel River floodplain. Engineers found that intense storms could trigger a premature opening of that dam's massive spillway swamping homes, schools, factories, and roads from Pico Rivera to Long Beach. Yeah, I say it like that because I have a subscriber, well, actually several, several who live in Long Beach. Uh, it, it's like nowhere in California are you safe. Well, nowhere, nowhere in the world are we safe anymore, considering everything that's going on. But, um, wow, man. <laughs> What is happening to this, to the infrastructure in our country? Well, it's, it's in our face now. Uh, they have not been maintaining our bridges, our dams, our roads. Too bad we were paying the taxes for that. Um, the Corps estimates it will cost roughly $600 million in federal funds to upgrade the Whittier Narrows facility which has been reclassified as the agency's highest priority nationally because of the risk of very significant loss of life and economic impacts. Well, all right, so they haven't even begun to work on it. Well, when you have all of those in California screaming, climate change, climate change, oh my God, the fires and the, and the flooding and you would think that they would be working on the infrastructure very, 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 very quickly, right? Doesn't appear to be the case. So, Oroville Dam's flood control manual hasn't been updated for half a century. What? The critical document that determines how much space should be left in Lake Oroville for flood control during the rainy season hasn't been updated since 1970, and it uses climatological data and runoff projections so old they don't account for two of the biggest floods ever to strike the region. That's kind of bizarre. Why is nothing updated in our country? Like the FCC, we're still using the same um, the same F CC regulations for safety, what was it, like 1996? We're still at 1996 for all of these frequencies. All right, at Oroville, the manual cites weather patterns prior to the 1950s. Manuals are designed around weather patterns that include capturing water from spring snowmelt 
an annual occurrence expected to shift in both timing and amount with continued climate change. You would have thought that these manuals would have been updated climate change, bringing about, and it has been for years, uh, these massive floods. These are dams. Why haven't they updated their manuals? Well, we did hear in the video that I posted yesterday, uh, a Department of Water Resources employee, uh, as she's being interviewed, she said that the flood protection level goes up to 855. That's when they start releasing waters. We're at 8, well, close to 891. Well, you guys are at 891. Um, so what's going on? Why aren't they releasing water? I mean, the snow melt, right? You still have that coming down. I mean, why haven't they, why didn't they start releasing water when listening to the weather reports of rain every day, you know, two inches or five inches or seven inches, they didn't start trying to release that water? This doesn't make sense. All right. Records raise safety questions surrounding Oroville Dam. And I do want to thank the subscribers who contributed to uh, the material that I'm, or the information that I'm uh, giving to all of you. All of the engine, th this was back in um, September 29, 2017. Okay, so the spillway collapse was February 2017. Then they had an independent investigation of the dam. And this is the report or the article on the investigation in September 20, 2017. All right. So all of the engineers told NBC Bay Area that the documents they reviewed raise serious safety questions or concerns that they say must be addressed sooner rather than later or risk failure of Oroville Dam itself. So the issues, a 15 foot long crack in the concrete at gate eight in the dam's headworks or flood control structure, which records, which records show appears to be growing. The crack appears to be growing. Huh spalling or deterioration of concrete in other areas of the dam, cracking tendons or trunnion rods that help move the 20-ton radial gates which control the flow of water through the dam, failure of the Department of Water Resources to develop a long-term plan to monitor the, uh, uh, the amount and speed of water that naturally flows through the earthen dam, despite a request by federal inspectors to do so. Huh. Federal inspectors ordered the California Department of Water Resources to establish a long-term plan to monitor the flow of water through the earthen dam. But thus far, the Department of Water Resources failed to create such a plan. Well, that seems odd, right? Yeah. Okay, according to the structural engineers who specialize in the dam design, construction, and safety, if the phreatic surface comes out at the wrong place and the wrong speed, it could erode the structure from the inside, and if enough force is created, it could wash away the entire dam. So, uh, I am giving you this information because you guys out there, somehow you've got to get some records from the Department of Water Resources on the repairs that have already taken place. They're, they're, I mean, those 
should be available to the public. Um, certainly the repairs since the failure of the spillway to date today, okay? Because it's far more than just that spillway. So, um, Don Coulson, a former engineer at the Department of Water Resources who worked at the State Water Project and its dams, said this, it tells me we got a problem due to uh, everything that I just read, you know, the phreatic surface, if it comes out the wrong place and the wrong speed, the dam goes, okay, it tells me we got a problem. It tells me that we're lucky that it hasn't manifested itself to a great problem and a crisis. Um, is this a case of a denial, absent-minded management, or what? They don't know what to do. This is a former Department of Water Resource guy, an engineer. Uh, Paulson worked on many facilities, including the Oroville Dam. Okay, so in February, the spillway at Oroville Dam collapsed after heavy winter rains. So you were going to get heavy spring rains, and they haven't released any water. All right. Um, the dam itself is 770 feet. The Oroville Dam is the nation's tallest dam. The dam holds back more than 3.5 million acre feet of water in Lake Oroville. The water is runoff collected from the Sahara Nevada. So they keep talking about that snow melt coming down. And boy, you got a lot of snow, right? If it were to fail, the dam would flood Sacramento and areas as far south as the East Bay. Such flooding could knock out nearly uh, or nearby levees and impact the drinking water for the Bay Area. Uh, Colson said, Orville Dam is already in trouble. I think it has failed. Now I'm reading this because this um, confirms what Scott Cahill was saying, that the dam is in failure mode. Here's another engineer saying the same thing. Um, I think it has failed. It just hasn't collapsed. The <laughs> Department of Water Resources Deputy Director Joel Ledesma said the state does have a monitoring plan. Well, I guess they just haven't disclosed that to the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, we have a very good seepage monitoring system already. And in our opinion, it's reliable. It's good. It would catch any leak. Wow. Now that's a statement that uh, brings a lot of confidence to you, right? You know, instills a lot of confidence. All right. Do you know how many engineers have been saying there are problems, there are problems, there are problems, and you only have the Department of Water and Resource Water Resources saying it's no problem. So something is very wrong here. Ledesma who oversees the entire California State Water Project, admitted that the current plan does not satisfy federal inspectors. Um, he could not provide an explanation for why it's taken the department so long to make these improvements. I don't have an answer for that. Coulson believes a spot on the face of the dam where heavy vegetation grows could be a sign of the phreatic surface that it's already leaking internally through the face of the dam. Coulson said, "This is that is terrifying, that wetness. Designers never want water like that rolling through their dam. Department of Water Resources maintains the so-called wet spot is not a safety concern. Ledesma says it's not a leak. The seepage on the earthen dam is one of the lowest in the world. And it has not changed since the dam was built. So we're pretty confident the dam is safe. Wow. Now that's a statement that sure does instill confidence. We're pretty confident. <laughs> pretty? The operative word. We're pretty confident the dam is safe. Great. 
investigative, the investigative unit, spoke with two retired Department of Water Resource insiders. The former employees, both engineers by trade, didn't want their names out there because they're worried they could lose their pensions after speaking out publicly about what they say are serious problems at the Oroville Dam. Both men recently retired from the department and say they were already aware of the issues found repeatedly in the inspection reports. They're not addressing issues that have been pointed out and documented in previous Division of Safety of Dams inspection reports. My driving force for speaking out is out of concern for the public. Another, the other engineer, who were named Tony and Mark, all right, um, the other engineer says, Department of Water Resources delayed response to these issues may be due in large part to the agency's culture. Yeah, lacks, the lax safety culture. They have a tendency to try to reduce their maintenance costs by trying to do things themselves and not getting adequate technical help. That approach could lead to another failure, like the spillway collapse in February, but he worries this time it would be worse. Here you'll have a catastrophic structural failure that's not going to allow you to operate the facility the way it's supposed to. In response to all of these concerns, the Department of Water Resources officials maintain the dam is safe. Okay. Uh, that's all they say. So you have all of these engineers pointing out the detailed problems and all the, the, the only response from the Water Resource Department is it's safe. Another major point of concern the engineers point to as problematic is a roughly 15 foot long crack on the concrete at gate 8 on the spillway headworks. Inspectors have been monitoring the crack with red spray paint and a report from February 2015 indicates the crack appeared to have grown in length and needed to be addressed immediately. Cracks like that could really weaken the structure to the point where you could lead to a failure. That's one of the retired engineers from the Water Resource Department. Uh, Ledesma says his engineers do know what it is. When asked specifically about the inspection report that noted growth in the crack, he said it was probably a miscommunication. What? Ledesma says his own conversations with the agency's dam engineers indicate the crack, what he calls a stress crack, that occurs when concrete is poured, has not grown. It's not changing, and it's not posing any risk to the structure. So all they do is contradict inspection reports and contradict other independent engineers and those engineers who are uh, retired from the Department of Water Resources. So here, independent engineers who spoke to NBC also point to another concern, cracks in the uh, trunnion rods, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but or tendons that support the flow control gates. Initial tests conducted back in 2000 and repeated several times since then show 28 of the 384 trunnion rods used to operate the eight flood control gates uh, have a 1 and 32 inch of an inch or bigger crack. Six of those cracks are larger than one sixteenth of an inch. Insiders at the Department of Water Resources and external expert, experts say that more precise and comprehensive tests of these cracks are necessary to better understand the issue. Back 10, 15 years ago, when we were looking at it, these bolts were cracking and failing. Um, that was uh, one of the engineers who retired. If this gate fails, you're not going to be able to control the releases out of Oroville. Coulson, uh, an independent, I believe he's an independent, uh, an engineer, he agrees. We're lucky that it hasn't manifested itself into a great problem and a crisis. Led 
Desmo says the rods aren't showing any signs of problem. Over and over again, they just contradict all of the other engineers. Okay, the reason why I read all of the particulars is because those particulars uh, should have been addressed. This was September 29, 2017. It's now May 2019. Still, uh, people have an awful lot of questions about that dam. Well, the public should be able to access records from the Department of Water Resources and look at those records to see if they addressed any of these problems. Now, California awards, is it Kiwit? I don't know, contract for Oroville Spillway repairs. I see a lot of comments, people saying that they're not doing anything, that they're mining for gold. I don't know. I find it interesting that the Department of Water Resources has restricted access to the dam, to the lake itself. Now, I want to ask you guys, in this area, did you have access to the lake? You know, can you go to the lake? And now you can't go to the lake? Which seems kind of odd to me. Um, so if you're not able to go to the lake, can you see what's happening on the lake? And if neither of those are um, possible, I would think something's going on that they don't want the public to see. So uh, they awarded this contract to Kiwit Infrastructure West Company uh, to repair the work on Oroville Dam Spillway and those records certainly, uh, well, Kiwit has the records of the work that they have provided. Um, maybe you can get a freedom of uh, information request going. Um, so they were told to begin work immediately to have the system operational by November 1 of 2017, which is the traditional start of the winter rainy season, season. The Department of Water Resources implementing its recovery plan to ensure the system can safely accommodate potentially heavy inflows from the Feather River watershed to Lake Oroville and subsequent releases from the lake. Okay, so, all right, this all of these uh, problems that were noted by engineers uh, who were retired from the Department of Water Resources, very concerned about all of these problems. Uh, Carlson was he independent, or I don't, I can't even remember. Um, but we did hear from Scott Cahill, uh, who noted an awful lot of problems, and. Uh, Okay, so, and that was, well, October 2017. You have Kiwit working on the dam, and it's supposed to be done by November 1. Well, there's no way that they could have addressed all of the problems with this dam. But now it's May. Okay, so it's May 2019. Um, uh, well, let me just point out Kiwit, all right? You can, here's Kiwit. And yes, they are a mining company. Um, here, Kiwit's mining experience includes constructing infrastructure, performing mine services, or contract mining in gold, coal, copper, diamond, gold, nickel, um, Wow. I literally, my brain is just gone from understanding how to pronounce this. Okay, doesn't matter. All right, well, uh, I don't know. I don't, you know, we can only speculate. Um, if you guys can get over there to look at the lake and find out 
You know, are they mining for gold? Who knows? Um, I do want to show you this report. This is uh, the dams within jurisdiction of the state of California and September 2018. All right, what is, what is this? The dams listed alphabetically. Well, they assess the dams. And I want you to note two categories that they have. Um, well, actually one, or no two, sorry. Condition assessment and unsatisfactory. A dam safety deficiency is recognized that requires immediate or emergency remedial uh, action for problem resolution. Well, what did Oroville what was their status? Unsatisfactory. Here's the Oroville. Um, the, this extremely high category is for the, the damage. Ex extremely high, expected to cause considerable loss of human life or would result in an inundation area with a population of 1,000 or more. Extremely high. Okay. Um, September 2018, the dam got an unsatisfactory grade. But Kiwit was supposed to have this all done by November 1, 2017. All I'm doing is pointing out that something is very wrong here and their lack safety culture at the Department of Water Resources I'm afraid still exists. You know it's well also reservoir restrictions. Now the Oroville has restrictions. Um, yes. Okay, so that is, you'll see the, the heading, okay? Reservoir restrictions. Oroville has restrictions. Why? What's the, what's these restrictions about? Um, it's the owner or the operator of the dam is ordered to operate the reservoir to a spe specified water surface elevation level that is lower than the maximum storage level. In addition, owners may self-impose a restriction as a result of an owner-initiated study that identifies a dam safety issue. Reservoir restrictions are typically imposed for deficiencies of the dam, spillway, low-level outlet, or other problems that the dam has in respect to safety. We heard from a Department of Water Resource employee say the level is 855. It's now at 891. And this dam has restrictions, so those restrictions imposed upon the owner or operator of this reservoir to reduce the levels even lower than 855. That's my understanding. So we've got a problem, and uh, you guys have a really big problem. Um, I would organize with some people and I would try to get as best you can get the records from the Department of Water Resources and Kiwit and find out what repairs have been done and try to find out why they're not releasing water 
from that dam. Especially when you have weather reports like, oh my God, you know, Noah's Ark, build your boat. You've got that rainfall coming, you've got that snow melt coming. All links are below.